Welcome to the Continuum Lab. I wrote a little song for you and I'm just about to play it, but first, please notice that I'll be playing this song on this brand new DIY MIDI ukulele, which I made using the electronics from the uh, Continuum Lab instrument kit, also known as the Click. Stick around after the song for more on that. I don't really sing, but hey, that's not what I'm here for anyway. I'm here to say that you should buy the Continuum Lab instrument kit. The click is what makes this thing run. So if you want one, you should know sometime next month. I hope to sell a small batch at ContinueLab.com And if I sell those first ones, I'll get some more and sell those too. And if I sell enough, I'll make it cheaper. Cheap enough for you and you and you and you and you. The kit does other stuff as well. There's really much too much to tell in just one song, but I'll continue if all of you subscribe. Subscribe. I call that little song, please subscribe and buy my kits. So if you like it, then hey, you know what to do. So this MIDI ukulele is one of the instruments that you can make using the Continuum Lab instrument kit. The necessary electronics for the project all come included in the kit and the code for this instrument is pre-programmed onto the included microcontroller. In this first batch there's going to be six different instrument types to uh, choose from and in the case of the string instrument you can further select between a ukulele or a bass guitar which are of course both four string instruments. The way that works is that the output from the strings is simply defined to match that of a ukulele, but can easily be changed to a bass setup by changing a single jumper on the breakout board. This specific instrument is really too small to play comfortably like a bass, which is why I also made this larger version here which has the exact same electronics and code in it, just put into a bigger context if you will. More on that later in the video. Anyway, if you've been following along in these videos, then you might have seen my original bass guitar prototype, which is the one featured in the Continuum Lab workshops. Or you might even have seen my very first MIDI ukulele from way back in the first series of Control Freak videos, which was quite primitive and honestly barely functional. But we've come a long way since then, so let's talk about what's new. First, and I guess most obvious, is the more realistic shape with this full and, dare I say, quite sexy instrument body. Now, you might think that I put that on there for uh, purely aesthetic purposes, but that's not at all the case. See, the thing is that the neck on here is much more narrow than on the bass guitar, and so I can't fit all of the electronics inside it. There is, of course, a simpler way of solving this problem, and so I also made a simpler version of the ukulele, which is this one, which keeps the streamlined neck-only design and just expands the structure at one end to fit everything inside. Apart from those obvious differences between the three instruments, they also represent different build techniques, ranging from simple craft using recycled and upcycled materials and to 3D printing. I'm currently preparing a tutorial on this instrument and the different ways to make it, as well as all of the other instruments in the kit, of course, and those will be coming out right here on the channel when I publish the Continuum Lab instrument kit itself, hopefully sometime next month, which will be October 2020. Anyway, back to the instrument. Another big change on here is the fretboard. All of my previous string instruments have had 16 fretboard sensors or less, because that's what you can make with a single multiplexer module. But with this one, I decided to go all in and use two multiplexers to give a total of 32 sensors for a pretty impressive fretboard with a lot of range. The irony of this dawned on me as I was looking on the internet for ukulele chord charts. Because it turns out that 99% of all the standard ukulele chords are played using just four fret sections anyway. The reason why having four fret sections works so well is because by the fifth section you're really just repeating the lowest note from the next string. Sure, it's nice for being able to play more varied harmonies and having more ways to play melodic lines, but really, all of the notes are already there on the first four frets, so joke's on me. But let's talk about the sensors and how they actually work. Like I mentioned, these are capacitive sensors, 
just like on the Continuum Lab, wind instruments and keyboards. So they don't measure string tension or anything like that. They don't vibrate or move at all. They just measure touch. So put your finger on one and it activates with a higher reading if you touch it with more finger surface area. That works really well for the sensors on the fretboard because I just need to know if a finger is on there or not. But the right hand string sensors have a different and quite specific functionality, which is that when you touch one, nothing happens. But then when you release it, it produces an output. Well, as it turns out, that's very much doable with these capacitive sensors. And it's really just a question of software. The click code on this instrument keeps track of the maximum readings of these sensors here at all times. And then when you let one of the sensors go and it outputs a note, the velocity of that note is defined by how high the last maximum reading on that sensor was. So if you're picking single notes, then you can control the volume by grabbing more string as you prepare for the release. And if you're strumming, then pressing harder on the strings as you do so will give more touch and with that a higher velocity also. Pretty much like on a real string instrument. Is it perfect? <laughs> no. But it's pretty impressive for a sensor that's made out of a single piece of conductor tape stuck onto a solid base and connected with one cable. The system does have weaknesses and they include not being able to play it with a pick or with your nails. So as you might have noticed, the structure for the string sensors is 3D printed, but that's completely optional. It really doesn't affect the functionality of the sensors, but simply helps to make a precise base for the sensor material to sit on. So I printed out the basic shape, but I still had to cover it in copper tape and then a dielectric layer like always. What would be very interesting would be to incorporate conductive filament into the 3D print to see if I can print the whole sensor structure all in one. But to do that, I would need to get a multi-extruder 3D printer, so I'll have to revisit that at some point in the future. Maybe if I sell a bunch of kits, that will make financial sense. Just saying. Anyway, when I initially finished the build, I was honestly a bit disappointed with how it worked. Uh, these right-hand sensors here were too slow to react because of all the extra time it was taking to read the 16 new fret sensors. So strumming was very frustrating because if I went too fast, it would skip strings. You see, the capacitive sensors on the Teensy are fast, but they're not instantaneous. The higher the reading, the longer it takes to read. Plus, I'm reading these sensors here through multiplexers, so that means another little bit of extra time added per reading. Now, we are talking about sub-millisecond delays here, but if you get enough sensors together and you need to read them really, really fast, like for strumming, then it becomes problematic. The solution, again, was a matter of adjusting the software. Instead of simply reading all of the sensors sequentially, I'm now reading only some of the fret sensors, then the right hand sensors, then some more frets, and then the right hand again, and so on. I even introduced a variable here in the code, which can be adjusted to decide at what relative rate the two groups of sensors should be read. The small delay that this technique introduces on the fret sensors is honestly not noticeable at all. But of course, that might also have something to do with my complete lack of string instrument technique. Whatever the case may be, I now find this instrument to be very playable indeed, except of course for the fact that I don't play it very well. Anyway, I could talk about this instrument all day, but there's still more work to be done, more instruments to make, so we'll have to pick it up in the next video. Make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss the fun, and in the meantime, you can check out my Instagram, which is also Continuum Lab, and of course, uh, the ContinuumLab.com page, which is still under construction, but is coming along nicely. Take care until next time, and I'll see you in the Continuum.